Stopping at Station 6, they examined the house-sized split boulder dubbed Trassus Rock, after Cernan's daughter. The crew collected 66 kilograms of lunar samples and took another 9 gravimeter measurements. Schmidt had seen a fine-grained rock, unusual for that vicinity, earlier in the mission and had stood it on its edge, before closing out the EVA, he went and got it. Subsequently, designated sample 70,215, it was, at 17.7 pounds, the largest rock brought back by Apollo 17. A small piece of it is on exhibit at the Smithsonian Institution, one of the few rocks from the moon that the public may touch. Schmidt also collected a sample, designated as sample 76,535, at Geology Station 6 near the base of the North Massif. The sample, a troctolite, was later identified as the oldest known, unshocked, lunar rock, meaning it has not been damaged by high-impact geological events. Scientists have therefore used sample 76,535 in thermochronological studies to determine if the moon formed a metallic core or, as study results suggest, a core dynamo. Before concluding the moonwalk, the crew collected a breccia rock, dedicating it to the nations of Earth, 70 of which were represented by students touring the U.S. and present in Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, at the time. Portions of this sample, known as the Friendship Rock, were subsequently distributed to the nations represented by the students. Before re-entering the LM for the final time, Cernan remarked. I'm on the surface, and, as I take man's last step from the surface, back home for some time to come, but we believe not too long into the future, I'd like to just say, what I believe history will record. Godspeed the crew of Apollo 17, Cernan then followed Schmidt into the LM. The final lunar excursion had a duration of 7 hours and 15 minutes. Following closing of the LM hatch and repressurization of the LM cabin, Cernan and Schmidt removed their spacesuits and reconfigured the cabin for a final rest period on the lunar surface. As they did following each of the previous two AVAs, Cernan and Schmidt discussed their geological observations from the day's excursion with mission control while preparing to rest. While Cernan and Schmidt were on the lunar surface, Evans remained alone in the CSM in lunar orbit and was assigned a number of observational and scientific tasks to perform while awaiting the return of his crewmates. In addition to the operation of the various orbital science equipment contained in the CSM's Sim Bay, Evans conducted both visual and photographic observation of surface features from his aerial vantage point. The orbit of the CSM having been modified to an elliptical orbit in preparation for the LM's departure and eventual descent, one of Evans' solo tasks in the CSM was to circularize its orbit such that the CSM would remain at approximately the same distance above the surface throughout its orbit. Evans observed geological features visible to him and used handheld cameras to record certain visual targets. Evans also observed and sketched the solar corona at sunrise, or the period of time during which the CSM would pass from the darkened portion of the moon to the illuminated portion when the moon itself mostly obscured the sun. To photograph portions of the surface that were not illuminated by the sun while Evans passed over them, Evans relied in conjunction on exposure and earthlight. Evans photographed such features as the craters Eratosthenes and Copernicus, as well as the vicinity of Mare Orientale, using this technique. According to the Apollo 17 mission report, Evans was able to capture all scientific photographic targets, as well as some other targets of interest. Similarly to the crew of Apollo 16, Evans reported seeing light, flashes, apparently originating from the lunar surface, known as transient lunar phenomena, Evans reported seeing these flashes in the vicinity of Grimaldi Crater and Mare Orientale. The causes of TLP are not well understood and, though inconclusive as an explanation, both of the sites in which Evans reported seeing TLP are the general locations of outgassing from the moon's interior. The flight plan kept Evans busy, making him so tired he overslept one morning by an hour, despite the efforts of mission control to awaken him. Before the LM departed for the lunar surface, Evans had discovered that he had misplaced his pair of scissors, necessary to open food packets. The instruments in the Sim Bay functioned without significant hindrance during the orbital portion of the mission, though the lunar sounder and the mapping camera encountered minor problems. Evans spent approximately 148 total hours in lunar orbit, including solo time and time spent together with Cernan and Schmidt, which is more time than any other individual has spent orbiting the moon. Evans was also responsible for piloting the CSM during the orbital phase of the mission, maneuvering the spacecraft to alter and maintain its orbital trajectory. In addition to the initial orbital recircularization maneuver shortly after the LM's departure, one of the solo activities Evans performed in the CSM in preparation for the return of his crewmates from the lunar surface was the plane change maneuver. 
Evans fired the SPS engine of the CSM for about 20 seconds in successfully adjusting the CSM's orbital plane. None of the Apollo 17 astronauts flew in space again. Evans retired from the Navy in 1976 and from NASA in 1977, entering the private sector. Schmidt resigned from NASA in 1975 prior to his successful run for a United States Senate seat from New Mexico in 1976. The ascent stage of Lunar Module Challenger impacted the Moon on December 15, 1972, at 6 hours 50 minutes and 20 seconds. 8 UTC, at 19.96 degrees north, 30.50 degrees east. The descent stage remains on the Moon at the landing site, 20.19080 degrees north, 30.77168 degrees east. Eugene Cernan's flown Apollo 17 spacesuit is in the collection of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, where it was transferred in 1974, and Harrison Schmitz is in storage at NASM's Paul E. Garber facility. Amanda Young of NASM indicated in 2004 that Schmidt's suit is in the best condition of the flown Apollo lunar spacesuits, and therefore is not on public display. Ron Evans' spacesuit was also transferred from NASA in 1974 to the collection of the NASM, it remains in storage. Since Apollo 17's return, there have been attempts to photograph the landing site, where the LM's descent stage, LRV and some other mission hardware, remain. In 2009 and again in 2011, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter photographed the landing site from increasingly low orbits. At least one group has indicated an intention to visit the site as well. In 2018, the German space company PT Scientists said that it planned to land two lunar rovers nearby.